Welcome to another workshop made by Alpha Audio. Uh, this time we're going to do the preamplifier made by Hypex. It's the DIY preamplifier. And the manual says DIY class D preamplifier. I think it's class A. <laughs> I don't. Well, I know some digital preamps, but this is, uh, I think, I think they mean that this is the preamplifier made for the class D power amplifier, the Nilai, we did recently. Uh, there is a basic kit, a user manual, and a uh, basic kit assembly instructions. Well, the user manual is of course the user manual, but we're gonna build it. And for that we need the instructions to build it actually. Well, the first page of course says all the parts in the box, uh, just like the power amp, we have some feet we're gonna use. Uh, we have some really nice knobs. And of course the bottom and the side plates and the top plates, etc. Et you can check this, but I assume that it is all actually in there. This is the result. Oh, you can use some add-ons, nice. So later on, I guess they will add some digital inputs. <laughs> but that's just an assumption. The first step is on page seven. And just like with the power amp, we need to assemble the side panels to the bottom plate first. And this is the bottom plate, yep. And these are the side plates. And we need some torques. I think that, yeah, these are for the case. See, these are for the front. Maybe they did actually um, cluster all the parts for a certain step, but they didn't mark the bags. So it would be clever uh, if they actually number the bags and they say, you need number one. Uh, in order to assemble this and then it's a lot easier to assemble the kit. Um, yeah, These are not really easy, but we'll manage. Yeah. Right through the feet and then into the bottom plate. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually not that hard. But we also already assembled the, um, the power amp, so we're veterans. But like, if you remember the power amp, don't over tighten these. Uh, and in the later step, you need to loosen them in order to slide in the top plate. It just won't fit if you already tighten it too, uh, too hard. So. We did this part, and now we can go to... Oh, they already want us to put on the front pieces. Well, these are of course silver. And these are too large. And these are, I think, correct? No. These, no, four of them. This is the grounding ring. Okay, we need to turn it around. See, this is the grounding ring. And in here you can see this part, it's dark. We need to use that in order to orientate it. We need this little piece for the grounding in a later step, I think. Do we need the dark screws or do we need the silver screws? I think we need the dark screws for this, yeah. Uh, and we need to put the ring at the back. This is correct. See, these fit right in. Not too tight, not yet. Put the ring at the back. And there we go, yeah. And now we can tighten it. Uh, 
The thing with engineers is that they think like an engineer and not like a consumer. But this is actually really well done. Just like I said with the DIY power amp, they thought about the process. And they didn't think, yeah, if you just do it like this, it will work. A, a consumer, in the end, didn't, wasn't involved in the whole thinking process of getting to a product. They don't know your logic. And I know it's hard to put yourself in the body of and mind of a consumer because they think differently. I mean, I know now what they uh, thought with the, the color coding of the screws, but the whole dark and silver screw thing, um, yeah, it's, it's different because here it is um, actually silver. The, the guide is good, but it's still a little weird sometimes. And there are screws that look like like another one, uh, but they're not exactly the same. You, you can make mistakes with this, al although it is really well documented. Okay, we need to go to the back panel. The back panel is of course the most work. And you need all the inputs and outputs, but they're already on the board. So <laughs> this one is not going to be that hard, I think. Uh, let me see how they did this. Okay, well, this is the fuse, the backup fuse. Oh, come on, get in there. Yeah, there you go. And then we need you have the, the normal fuse and you have a backup fuse. And this needs to be like this. Yeah, this clip is right in here. And then it will slide in and it's fused now. Well, we got it fused now. Just click it in. And now we need to push this right through the back panel. Uh, Okay, that's actually really tight. Wow, that is really tight. Bottom and the top, yeah. It's, it's not, you don't need to use a lot of force. Just put it in a little bit under, under an angle and get this through the hole and then push it through. You don't get it by just pushing it straight in. That won't work because the clips are too tight for that. Then we need to on and off button. Uh, let me see, yeah, like this. Nice. Oh, that feels really good now. Oh, I like this one. Um, and then we need to wire it. I don't think this one, uh, it's uh, maybe a little bit more work than the power amp, but not that much actually. Okay. Okay, these are, I think, for the power supplies. No, this is that signal. Uh, this is power, but we need this one first. Okay, if you look at this picture, you can see that it needs to be on this side and then on the bottom side. So we switch the live wire. Then we need a grounding wire and the power and normal one. Okay. Brown, yeah, of course you switch the live wire. So on the switch you need the live wire. And then we need the neutral wire on this one. Neutral, live, live, live. So you get power in here. It will break the live wire and you got a neutral on there. And then we need a 
ground wire that will come later. That's this one, green and yellow. Okay, that finished the wiring of the entry, the terminal, power terminal. We are already gonna mount this. Uh, well, as you can see, this is the grounding piece. So we need to mount it like this. And do we need black screws, of course? Yeah, black screws. With no rings. We don't need any rings. Not sure if I'd pick the right screws for the front now. Because I don't need this bag, I just need this bag. Are these then for the front? That would be weird because they don't actually fit that well. Yeah, I think so. And the last one. Okay. That's the back side. It's on. We need to mount the back plate now, the blind plate. This is as a block, well, um, some sort of bezel, and it fits from the inside to the outside and then this is completely flush if you look at it okay these small black bolts will fit in and now I'm curious if these will work small rings because I need to put a ring in between yeah a ring with a bolt okay And then maybe I think it's this one. Yeah. Ring with a small bolt. Okay. Ah, uh, well, whatever. It's the same ring. Just keep your finger on it and tighten it a little bit. It, it, it's not supposed to be really tight. I mean, it's, it's firmly in there. Then we need to put in the power supply. Some guy said you need to peel off something in the... No. doesn't say anything about peeling off some stuff like in the guide no nope, nothing there's nothing on there see there are five holes one is there one two three four five so we need to put it on like this and we need some black screws yeah two two long ones and one and three smaller ones okay Nope, it's too long. Nope, the longer ones actually don't work at all. Did I miss something? Not that I'm aware of. Well, that's the power supply. Then we need to put in the input board. <sighs> wow. That is nice. Nice. Cool. New trick. Cool. Yeah, really nice. Uh, we need to slide this one in. And like the manual says, you need to do it like this. It's because of these clips. Uh, just be careful. Like this. Okay. Yep. 
And yeah, it doesn't touch the bottom plate. And we need some normal screws. Yeah, with a small hex. I think it's this one. No, that's too small. This one. Yeah. Okay. Now just screw these in. That's the back plate. Wow, it's really nicely firmly in place. That's cool. Um, I need to... Okay, need to put some buses under there. Spacers. One, two, three. I need these long ones. Okay. Let's see, put it under there. Like this, put it under there, like this, and under there, like that. See, there's a input, some contacts. Just feel when it grips. Now this is really firm. No problems here. Then the front plate and some, okay, front board and headphone. Oh, it's got a headphone output. Cool, I didn't know. Ah, a display. Damn, if this, sounds right it's gonna be one hell of a deal i mean this is absolutely stunning cool ah see okay let's uh, follow the the guide so headphone output like this yeah like that Okay, this needed a small push, a small um, encouragement to go in there with the ring already in. Okay. I'm not sure what the price is of this preamp. I think it's 1250. But I mean, look at the uh, at the casing and look at the quality of the components yeah it takes an hour maybe 30 minutes I don't know if you're handy 30 minutes to to put it in but damn, that's a good deal um, okay there are a couple of screws in there uh, as you can see you need these And a small one right here. I'm curious because uh, we, this connector needs to be attached at some point, I think. How are we going to do that? The brackets. Put this fellow in here, right here, and then this one right here. Okay. They want us to attach the power supply and the grounding, so we build this. Cool. And now they want us to do the power supply. So they say, if we put it right here, 
that this needs to be on the two pin, of course, it's right here. So 230 goes in here and they want us to put the grounding right there. And that's this little fella. So you can feel your way through right there. Yeah, put this on top for the grounding, the ring, and the bolts. And you can hand tighten it already. So now it grips, and then you can, uh, it's the big hex one. There you are. This one. Okay, and it grips itself, so tighten it firmly, this one, because you don't want to get it loose because it's for your own safety. Okay. Yeah. You can clip it already, but not tighten it already. See? Clicks in place. Uh, but don't tighten it already, they say. Probably because some, maybe, you need to loosen it a little bit in another process. So, you got some long cables and you got some short cables. The long cable is on here. And just like with the other ones, you don't need any force it should just clip, but just push it a little bit so that you know it's firmly in there. So this long one needs to be in J3, as you can see here. The blue one goes to the front and it's a little bit smaller. The wider one is the jumper of J, J3, most of the time J stands for jumper, but this is not a jumper actually. So you need to be in here right next to the smaller one and then we take the blue one and this is this one and this is this one so you go right in here hmm. okay like this yep right in here and then you go right in here, right on top. There you go. Okay, come on. You can do it. There you go. Yeah, it's in there. Then the yellow one will go from here. That's the headphone amp. Right from here. To here, if you can see that I'm probably I'm in the way with my head. That's the volume control. Must be for the. This should be on and off, I guess, because it's on the power supply. This may be volume control, also for the headphone amp, because I guess this one will also connect somewhere there. This is right, HP right. Ah, it's on the deck right, deck left. <laughs> Thought so, there's gonna be a deck. And this one says headphone right. There you go, headphone left. Headphone left. There you go. I'll put this right here to prevent some signal cross talking. Oh, you can even, yeah, uh, they did the same. See? Yeah, you want to prevent power from crossing your signals. So that's that's a good idea. And uh, there are, yeah, they got some stuff.
to tie wrap it. We'll do that. Good point, Hypex. That's a good point. And we even got some pliers. There you go. Don't over tighten the tie wraps, by the way. You will definitely kill your wire if you do that. Now we can close it up. Why do I need to get this off? Because now it says, yeah, you're done. Uh, you can get this off, but why would I take it off? Ah, uh, to get the lid on. Ah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> so, we did this. Now we only need to get the lid on. And that's right here. And I really hope that this is enough to slide it in. There you go. We just helped it a little bit. Okay. There we go. Nice. This is on. And uh, now we can tighten the back again. So just like with the power amp, I needed to loosen the back a little bit to get the lid on. Otherwise it's just too tight. That's enough. And now we need to tighten the bottom. Hmm. Still got some screws left. I think it's for the additional boards. actually getting heavy. Oh. Okay, let's see. And you need to, if, I don't know if you can see it. And uh, this is squared and this is squared. So you need to put the, the screw in like this in order to put it on the squared piece. Well, the flattened piece, it's a better word, the flattened piece. The screw is in, can you see it? Yeah, I hope so. And now put it on and just tighten it. I can feel it gripping now, now tighten it. Ah, a little bit of play, a little bit. So, put the flattened piece up. Put the screw in. Put it on. Yeah. And tighten it. All right. Well, that's it actually. This is the Hypex Class D preamp, uh, which is not Class D, I think. <laughs> but uh, this is the Class D amp. Um, you also have a remote control with it. Uh, honestly, I think it's really ugly, but you do have a remote. Uh, this is the well, it's a standard Hypex uh, remote control with function keys and uh, volume input on and off and OK. I don't think this is up to par with the build quality of the preamp itself. This, this is just not a really nice remote to look at. But you get it. Anyway, it is remote controlled. It has a headphone output, another headphone output. This is balanced. This is single ended. Very nice turning knobs. Just a tiny bit of play, but for a DIY preamp, it looks amazing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.